after the Tucker Carlson interview, somebody made an edit of old clips of Andrew. This video was made by a Twitter account named Milk Bar TV. Uh, Nathan Livingston did. juxtaposed his interview with Tucker with other things that he has said openly on camera. And it took off all over Twitter. It, it became the story of this week. Actually, a fairly long compendium that was going around. You put out a reaction to this video about Andrew Tate. Which Elon went ahead and responded to by saying he should have his day in court with the allegations and some things he has admitted saying are troubling. This is a must watch video. So since that video has gone viral, a bunch of people have seen this video now and have some things to say. Now I believe Andrew must have saw this edit as it had over 7 million views and he went ahead and posted a video last night. Welcome. Hi, my name is Nathan from Milk Bar TV. I made a uh, Andrew Tate video recently that went uh, quite viral. Uh, at this point in time, it's got over um, 10 million impressions and 3 million video views. You know, for me, it's like I was always on the fence with Andrew Tate. I neither liked the guy or uh, hated him. It always irked me that uh, everyone always pulled him up on, on his controversial hot takes on masculinity and uh, how he felt about women. So after the um, Tucker Carlson interview, I knew enough that he had this webcam business and I knew enough uh, that he lied about his charges and downplayed them. So at that point in time, I was like, all right, I'm going to dig in to this guy a little bit. And um, what I found was pretty horrific. It's pretty disturbing, really, especially when you um, consider that this guy is some sort of a role model for a generation of um, younger men. Anyway, this video went crazy viral. Liz Wheeler uh, blasted it out. And um, it seemed like everyone was kind of weighing in. It caused so much of a uh, stir that Andrew Tate, in fact, made a response video to it. He, uh, he decided to double down the lying. He just kept right on lying. Um, it's baffling, really, because uh, the court documents, uh, they're out there. They're in, they're in the public. Since I um, released that viral video, uh, a group of people who were the ones who actually obtained the um, court documents and um, this group of people are the ones who put a lot of hard work to um, translate and to kind of dig through it and find out what's actually going on with Andrew Tate's criminal case. Um, so I thought I'd take the opportunity to uh, make a response to Andrew Tate's response of my uh, viral video on him and um, I do it with one of those uh, people um, who remains anonymous because Andrew Tate's fans aren't the nicest people in the world. Um, and so uh, it, me and this anonymous Twitter account, we uh, decided that we'd actually break down every single one of Andrew Tate's lies that he told in that response video. So uh, here you go. I mean, it's long because he, he told a lot of lies, but uh, I think it's pretty interesting. And, you know, for me, it was the first time I, I heard pretty much all of it. You know, if you think he's some sort of a role model, if you're on the fence about him, I think by the end of this video, uh, your mind will be made up that this guy is pretty well a scumbag and um, you know, could well go to prison for quite a while. Anyway, here you go. All right, I've got Murder by uh, Crayons here. Um, Murder by Crayons uh, has been working hard on this for uh, quite a while with a group of other people. Can you explain how you came across these documents? Yeah, first of all, thanks for having me. All of the documents that we're going to talk about today, all the documents that we've been sharing on the internet, there's multiple documents. They were all obtained legally through Romania's Freedom of Information Act. We have a document showing on the screen right now that shows you uh, this particular one is for their indictment document that was sent out. Everyone has access to this information. You can actually contact the Bucharest court yourself and you can request these documents. You just have to know what the actual document number is, which you can get that off of their own court web portal. So all of the things that we're going to talk about today are coming directly from Romania. Uh, these are not leaked from the media. They were sent directly to us from the Bucharest court. They're originally sent out in Romanian. Uh, we translate them to English. It's also important to note that because these are sex crimes, that they are heavily redacted uh, for everyone's privacy. All right. Well, should we begin? Let's, uh, let's start breaking this down. Firstly, it is common knowledge that I used to run a webcam company. This is something I've talked about myself at length on multiple podcasts. Everybody knows I used to do this. This is a business I was involved in about 10 years ago, and I ceased all activity pertaining to anything sexually related five and a half years Pause. ago. Pause. Okay, so that is verifiably false. In the actual indictment itself, 
there are multiple victim statements and one of the victim statements, uh, victim summaries. And one of those, the latest one, it happened in 2022. And it says in the period from the end of 2022 to another redacted date of 2022, the defendant Andrew Tate through the Instagram, uh, Instagram application and following meetings in the UK deceived the victim by falsely inducing her about the intention of establishing a marriage relationship in the existence of false feelings. This is called the lover boy method. Uh, in another period between specific dates in 2022, together with the defendants Luana Radu and Georgiana Nagal, both of them have been charged with him by exercising physical violence and psychological coercion resulting from actions of intimidation, surveillance, control, and invoking false debt. They provided shelter for the victim in a specific building at a redacted address. They also transported her from the UK to Romania together with defendant Georgiana Nagel, with the aim of sexually exploiting her by forcing her to engage in pornographic activities for the production and distribution of pornographic materials using the website OnlyFans.com, which is a sex site, 2022, and by subjecting her to forced labor using the website TikTok.com to attract over 1,000 uh, to attract over 1,000 followers, and it's important to note how TikTok was used in this. TikTok was used as a way to break in new girls who didn't even know about OnlyFans or were not ready to work on OnlyFans. They would first butter them up, get them having fun with other girls on TikTok, then move them into getting their own TikTok account. Then they would get them monetized. That's what the forced labor would come from. Once they would start making money, they would start manipulating them through various ways to try to get them to work on OnlyFans. So it was kind of a, a gateway drug to get models to work on OnlyFans. So verifiably false right out of the gate. Uh, the last one happened in 2022. They were still actively involved in OnlyFans where you can do webcam inside of OnlyFans. You can make uh, pornographic videos inside of OnlyFans and you can make pornographic images inside of OnlyFans. And I believe you have a video from 2020 he did an interview with the YouTube channel called Trip Advice, where he talks about still having some webcam girls left uh, in 2020. And it's important to note that they cleverly say we haven't been involved in quote unquote webcam when what they actually did was they transferred over to OnlyFans where they can do everything behind a paywall where it's a lot more private. So they can take the webcam and the pornography inside OnlyFans. So they're very clever about how they uh, shape the narrative. For four years, I ran a webcam studio, which people find very interesting. I had naked girls sitting on the internet talking to guys, and they all worked for me. So I guess in many ways, I was a digital pimp. So when I joined Twitter and these kind of things after Trump's election, I kind of jumped on Twitter and the internet, and everyone's like, you do what? That's weird. And they're like, well, you must know a thing or two about girls. We've never seen females or male-female dynamics approach from this particular angle before. And that's kind of how I ended up here. So, so you don't I, like, do you do that still? Um, I recently, I have three girls who still work for me. Um, but it's, it's not my, it's not like it was before. Okay. So that was from January, 2020. However, there are victim summaries and victim statements in Romania that have him working in 2020, 2021 and 2022. So right out of the gate, we're off to a bad start. So I've been out of this industry for a very long time. I have nothing to do with it anymore. And I false. stopped five and a half years ago. Verifiably false. We just went over that. And when I did have the webcam company, it was operating in a few different countries because I was semi-nomadic traveling around the world. I had some girls who I worked with, some good friends of mine, and it operated in a few different places. I want to start by saying that there are over 2,000 video chat companies inside of Romania, that there are over 600 of them in Bucharest in the city I'm sitting in right now, that it is not illegal. Perhaps you pause. What he's doing right now is gaslighting everyone. He's planting that seed in your head that what he's doing is perfectly legal. And it's important to understand that the business of OnlyFans and the business of webcaming and the business of making pornography, that is legal so long as everyone is over the age of 18. However, he has not been charged for simply running an OnlyCam studio or running webcam. He is specifically charged with human trafficking specifically human trafficking in continued form. And that has nothing to do with the legality of OnlyFans or webcaming. It's important that people understand that. Keep going. That it is heavily immoral. I'll entertain that argument. But you certainly cannot say it is illegal because it isn't. Every girl in Miami has an OnlyFans. In fact, I think it's Canada and USA that has the most yeah, None of this is relevant to this. Online video chat girls. So these Americans were coming at me saying, you did pornography to... 
America's full of porn stars. LA's full of porn stars. Like, all- Nobody is claiming him of illegally running a, a webcam studio, even though in Romania, um, they did not have any employment contracts for the girls working for him. But no one is actually, he's not charged with running an illegal business. He's charged with human trafficking in continued form, along with other crimes of forming an organized crime group and rape in continued form. None of that has anything to do with the legality of the pornography industry. All of this stuff is immoral, yes, but illegal, no. You literally have people having sex on camera, for real, with each other. And that's all accepted and perfectly legal. So a girl sitting there with a keyboard telling a guy, yeah, you're so hot, isn't illegal either. What they're saying, though, is that I use the lover boy Pause. method. Pause. All right, what is the lover boy method? What is he actually being charged with? He's being charged of human trafficking in continued form. And it's called in continued form because this started off with multiple human trafficking allegations. One of the misconceptions is that these charges were dropped and there's only one left. When in fact, what happened was they were consolidated into a heavier charge that carries three more years of prison time if they're convicted and given the maximum sentencing or the maximum sentence. So if originally they were convicted of human trafficking, they would get 10 years. But if they're convicted of human trafficking in continued form, it would be 13 years. So it's a consolidated uh, form of human trafficking. Now, the lover boy method, uh, to read this, it means lover boys or Romeo pimps are human traffickers who usually operate by trying to make young girls or boys fall in love with them. Once they have the victims under their influence, they exploit them. For instance, in the sex industry. You cannot get a girl to work for you having fucked. So the recruitment process is the same as the PhD course. You message them on Instagram. The PhD course is my recruitment system. I don't mention webcam until after I've had sex with the girl. If you're on dates and you're trying to mention it and shit, it just doesn't work. It puts them off. I'd never do that. That's disgusting. I'm not a whore. Uh, It's just not going to work. You continue as normal, no mention of webcam. You fuck the girl. After you fuck the girl, you do the PhD test. If she passes the PhD test and she wants to be with you, then you start mentioning things like, yeah, but you know, you're always busy. You're always at work. You can come work for me. So he's talking about the PhD test and he's talking about how he uses the lover boy method. He's talking about how he doesn't actually tell them about webcam until after he has sex with them and then they do the PhD test. So speaking about the PhD test, this was actually on his original site, CobraTate.com. Uh, there's video evidence of him talking about owning CobraTate.com despite his allegations of not owning it. He said the PhD program wasn't his. It, it, this is all documented stuff. So on the PhD program on the website, It actually says where they sold it. My job was to get women to fall in love with me. Literally, that was my job. My job was to meet a girl, go on a few dates, sleep with her, test if she's quality, get her to fall in love with me to where she would do anything I say, and then get her on webcam so we could become rich together. Now, the fact that she gets paid or makes some of that money, that doesn't matter in this particular case because he also didn't pay them fairly uh, for a lot of these situations, which we could get into later. Whether you agree or disagree with what I did, I did with their loyalty, submission, and love for me, it doesn't matter. You cannot reject the results, and the results are simple. My girlfriends would do more for me than 99.9% of men's wives would do for them. Okay, so this is the lover boy method, right? You recruit women for the purpose of getting them to fall in love with you. You build a false relationship with that woman for the purpose of manipulating her through various methods to get them to work. Uh, in the commercial sex industry, which can be webcam or making various forms of pornography. And if you go and you look at that original document that we had uh, from 2022, and by the way, there's seven victims in this particular case. Each one of them have their own story. In the indictment, they have victim summaries. They show very clearly that he's being accused of deceiving the victim by falsely inducing her about the intentions of establishing a marriage relationship and the existence of false feelings. That is by definition the lover boy method of human trafficking. Lover boy within itself is not a crime. Human trafficking is the crime. Lover boy is just the method in which they used in the act of human trafficking. Because that's what I did. That was my, my MO was find girls, make them love me and make them work for me. And that's how I got rich. So that teaches everything I know from start to finish about uh, not only getting girls, not only obtaining them, but retaining them. Because that's a completely different game as well. Mm-hmm. So I teach everything I know in there. What he just explained 
was a lover boy trafficking. And it's important to note that his PhD course and the only fan course that he was selling would teach other young men how to do the exact thing that he has been charged with. Important to note that there are people in Romania that were students of his. One of them is Vlad Ubu, Obo, however you pronounce his last name. He has been arrested in Romania along with accomplices for human trafficking as well. So his students are now being arrested for human trafficking. They learned from Andrew Tate how to do this, and they are now being charged with human trafficking as well. I want to make it clear that when these charges appeared, every single girl who ever worked for me all those years ago, when I had this video chat company, has been contacted by authorities, and every single one of them defended me. He is not a human trafficker. He would never rape anybody, and he would certainly never ever human traffic anyone either, including his brother. They would never do such thing. I am just so shocked, and I'm so fed up with all of these lies. Pause. Okay, so there are seven victims in this case currently. On the day of their indictment, they announced the disjointment of some of the allegations that they were looking into, some of the, the charges they were thinking about charging them with. Those are now a second investigation. It's important to note that there are a lot of things that they were originally looking into the brothers for. The indictment is for one set of charges. Now, in this current indictment, this particular girl named Vivian, Vivian is Andrew's quote unquote bottom bitch uh, during a particular time with some of these victims. She is implicated in the actual documents in this particular case. She's mentioned uh, about being his girlfriend, Vivian, where some of the victims had actually met her. And there's another area in a victim summary where they redacted the name, but during 2018, together with a person named, and they redacted, uh, that very well could be Vivian as well. It's important to note that she is tattooed uh, with his name and he, uh, why don't you just play the video so everybody knows how long ago he met Vivian and how old she was. So you can play that video to add more context of why Vivian would say that he's innocent. I've had it where I've had girls who say, oh, I know you're with Vivian. I know you've been with her a long time. I don't mind. I'll stay out tonight. You two stay alone. All that shit. But it never lasts long because the ones who are really in love with you won't do that. You actually have to downplay your relationship with the girl of six years, which is difficult. And I only get away with that because the girl of six years plays along. So Vivian's been with me six years. She's completely head over heels in love with me. She wants kids with me, everything, everything, everything. And we met and we fell, whatever, we're in love. But when a new girl comes, she'll go, oh yeah, I started off working for him and you know, it's just how it worked out. She'll super downplay us. When I bring on new girls, I usually pair them with Vivian. Because Vivian's younger. Melissa's like 28, Vivian's like 21. Pause, pause for a second. He already said, that he's been with Vivian for six years. Now he says that Vivian's 21. Keep playing. Vivian's younger. She's more fun, more outgoing. Melissa's really quite, not in a bad way. She's more homey, boring, sits at home. So it's, if you're gonna pair a girl with a girl, it's much easier if the girl's fun. Uh, taking Andrew at his word here, which may or not be true. Uh, if, if it's true, according to the math, he's been with her since she's been uh, 15 years old, according to him. Now, a girl has been with him since the age of 15, who is his bottom bitch, who has been implicated in the current case. Uh, she's not a victim. She's not a witness, but she is mentioned. You have to ask yourself, why would she make a video defending him? Um, there's a good possibility that she's also a victim herself. And for that second investigation, we don't know yet if she's part of that, but I would not be surprised if she ends up being part of that uh, in some capacity. Continue to play. Relationship process with Vivian. So yeah, that's how it started. I met Vivian. In, in Slovakia, we had a long-term relationship thing. I was living in England. It's a really long story. I don't want to tell you the whole story. I moved her to England to be with me to start doing my webcam company, which I started. If you don't have a webcam company, you need to look into it. Because as soon as you have a couple girls in love with you, it's the fucking easiest money in the world. No, I take that back. It's not easy money. You've got to build it up. But once you get girls built up, then it's free money. Like every other business, you've got to build it up. But I decided I, want, I decided I want to start a webcam business. Vivian's beautiful. I said, look, stop being a waitress. Come here, live with me. She came. Everything was fine for a couple of weeks. Melissa obviously lived in England. They didn't know about each other. They found out. They tried to have a big argument with me. I did exactly as I said, downplayed it, didn't give a shit. Everyone moved in together. Everyone started doing webcam. I was making loads of money. Then we agreed to the split, like we said. And that's basically been it. Since then, new girls have come along. Vivian understands that I'm fucking these hoes, but I don't care about these hoes. Okay. So she's his bottom bitch. She doesn't care uh, 
Like he does, she doesn't care what else he's doing with the girls. And she is implicated in this current uh, indictment. So in terms of why would she make this video, you can probably ask yourself, uh, you should probably ask yourself, yeah, why would she do that? She's got, she's tattooed with his name. She's been with him since the age of 15, possibly 16. She was an accomplice in breaking some of these girls down. So she's involved. She's involved and she's possibly a victim herself. I just want to put out there that everything you're seeing on the news right now is all false accusations. Um, as for someone who knows him personally, I can confidently say that um, he's such a nice man. He's very generous. He's always been respectful of me and others around him. Like I've witnessed him in situations surrounded by women, men, children, families, and he's always respected everyone. Um, always very nice to people, very generous, so kind. Um, I think the media is just portraying a really bad image of him right now. And it's not fair because he actually generally is a really good person. Yeah, I don't. I don't know her involvement in the case, but I believe her name is Lex uh, on Twitter. There's someone who goes by dating coach Lex who looks and sounds exactly like her. But in terms of any relevance to the, the, the case, I don't know how she's involved. So continue on. All 100% of them, not a single one of them has made a complaint against me. Not a single one of them has complained about the way they were treated. Not a single one of them has complained about the way they were recruited or the work they did. In fact, Every single one who has been contacted by authorities, and trust me, they've all been found, has written statements in my defense. Pause. Okay, so everyone except for the victims in the case claims that uh, he has not done anything with them. So, uh, you know, giving him the benefit of the doubt on this one, if he says that every single one of them has a written statement in his defense, then obviously he's going to uh, be able to show that in court in his defense. Uh, but at this point, it, we're running on trust me, bro. So we'll see. Nobody is complaining about it. The criminal charges against me pertain to an organized criminal group which was began in 2021. Pause. Okay, so that is actually true. The charge of forming an organized criminal group, they're alleging that it began in the beginning of 2021 in the territory of Romania. And this is where it's going to start getting juicy. Continue. Considering that the videos that people are circulating and the webcam company that they were related to was all back in 2016, 2017, they have nothing at all to do with the criminal file. Pause. Okay. This is verifiably false. So in the indictment itself, what he's being charged with, one particular victim statement and victim summary here mentions that this starts in 2016. So he's trying to confuse people here by saying that nothing matters past 2021. That is verifiably incorrect because that's only for the charge of forming an organized criminal group. It has nothing to do with the charges of human trafficking or the main charge of human trafficking in continued form. And it has nothing to do with the charge of rape in continued form. He's confusing people with this. And as you can see in the indictment itself, it says in the period, and of course they redacted some of the exact dates here, in the period from 2016 to 2017, the defendant, Andrew Tate, using an application, which they redacted, while in Romania, deceived the victim by falsely inducing her about the intention to establish a family marriage relationship and the existence of false feelings. Then they go on in the period of 2017, the defendant transported her from the UK to Romania, as well as in specific areas where they provided shelter for her in a specific building as well as in the United Kingdom within a period in 2018. During this time, together with a person named Blank, which uh, Blank, which is, uh, quote unquote, his bottom bitch, they subjected the victim to physical violence and psychological coercion resulting from the actions of intimidation, surveillance, and control with the aim of sexually exploiting her. They forced her to engage in pornographic activities for the production and distribution of pornographic materials using the website, redacted, it's just, uh, webcam in sight. Uh, the victim activated this through the account with the username redacted during the period of 2018. So this particular victim starts in 2016, which means that anything is relevant starting in 2016, uh, moving forward. And this is specifically about webcamming. So right out of the game, I mean, it's just, we're getting caught in a lot of lies already. They're not in the criminal file. They're not translated to be in the criminal file. They have nothing at all to do with the case. Wrong. That we just that is verifiably false. We just proved that wrong. I can't talk too much about the case against me, but what I can tell you is the rough outlines. In April of last year, two international visitors came here. They had a nice time, went to parties, 
asked for some money to go shopping. They were denied. They then said they were kidnapped. CCTV proved that that was a lie. Okay, pause. Okay, so that is also a verifiable lie. It's important to understand that the victim herself never claimed to be kidnapped. Now, a lot of you have seen the infamous WhatsApp logs and the Tate's, uh, their PR team first leaked these and they showed you just parts of the chat and they were trying to push a certain narrative that the girls were trying to frame the brothers. If you look at the entire chats and their prosecutor has those entire chats, we have copies of the entire chat, the girls were actually planning an escape from the brothers. And these are just parts of the chat uh, where she's having a conversation with her parents. She's saying, I'm leaving London in a couple of days. Tristan and his brother are terrible people. I'm bringing a girl with me that's stuck here with me. Maybe I came here for a reason, cutting my losses and we're making a plan to leave. These guys are actually evil. Now she's talking to her parents at this particular time. The parents say, be very careful. Talk to the American embassy if you can. This girl's an American citizen. We're gonna get into this later. So she sends an image. We don't know what that image is. She comes back and says, I bought the girl a ticket. She will transfer the money to me. The parents say, send the whole itinerary. How are you gonna get out of his house? Send the whole itinerary. How will you get out? Do you think he'll let you go after investing so much in you? They have a plan for you and the girl. It's very dangerous. The victim says, I'm a little worried about leaving, but we've set our flights for 6 a.m. He moved me into a house with four of the girls. Three of the four girls have been here between one and five years, and they are groomers. They normalize taking off your clothes and sending them pictures all together, etc. Tristan's brother, who's Andrew, is dating Redacted from Redacted. She has broken up with him. He's texted her, telling her if she loves him, she will cut an A into her wrist. His name is Andrew. So Andrew, according to her, Andrew is telling a girl he's dating to cut, to self-harm and cut the letter A into her wrist if she loves him. Uh, then she says, this is very important, they are definitely trafficking women. This is a conversation that she's having with her parents. The parents say, I told you, now try to get out of there quietly. The victim says, yes, I'm going to get this girl out. Her name is Alonia. The dad comes in and says, hi, dad here. Stop your messages now. Go low key. You're in a very dangerous situation. Uh, the next image here, the victim says, I'm actually in the best position to able to get out right now. The other girls might tell them, though, we're going to leave when they are sleeping. Okay, now keep in mind, she hasn't mentioned that she's been kidnapped. She's actually making a plan and she's telling her parents, I'm making a plan. I'm getting another girl we're getting out of here. And she says, these girls are brainwashed. They don't do anything except stay in the house. And if they leave, everyone has to know. There are handlers too. Thankfully, I'm out of the house with Tristan. I asked to leave to one of the other homes. So they had multiple homes. They had the house where their brothers lived and they had multiple girl or multiple houses where they would keep the women. The parents say, please don't think you're more clever than these guys. Keep a low profile. Be careful how you are getting, uh, be careful of how you're getting to get your needs. Do not display your aggression that you have. You will not win. Get to London and come back to safety. We will get to tickets. So there, I and mean, this is a long, long chat message between her parents, between the other girl. And what ends up happening over time is she was planning an escape. Her parents called the embassy on her behalf. And I believe the parents may have mentioned kidnapping. That was the catalyst to kick off the April raid where the police went into the Tate compound. And when they found them there, this girl, this victim, along with another victim, had locked themselves in a room. They locked themselves in a room and they were rescued by the police. They were planning on getting out. The parents foiled that plan. And deeper into the chats, she actually has a fight with her parents. She was angry that they called the embassy. Nowhere in the documentation anywhere did the victims accuse them of kidnapping them. There was a brief investigation based on the initial claim of kidnapping, but Romania stopped investigating that because they realized it was not true. The charge here is human trafficking. It is not kidnapping. So these particular girls, uh, one of the things that they stated to the parents was that they were, and as part of the plan was they put a plan together to make the brothers believe that they'd fallen in love with the brothers. And the whole point of that was so that they could gain some more freedom so that maybe they might be able to move to another house. So they might be able to sneak out while they were sleeping. The whole conversation about the Oscars and Netflix, those were the two girls, the two victims, sarcastically uh, patting each other on the back for deceiving the brothers and making the brothers believe that they'd fallen in love with them.
that was completely taken out of context and framed in a way that they were trying to set the brothers up. You can go read the entire chat uh, transcript and it clearly displays an escape plan. Now, it's important to note with the CCTV footage, this is the evidence where they claim that the girls were not kidnapped. So again, no one was kidnapped. No one has been charged with kidnapping. They have been charged with human trafficking. A lot of people don't understand what human trafficking actually is. And the image that you're going to put on the screen, this is an international standard of what human trafficking is. 181 countries have agreed upon this basic standard of human trafficking. The prosecutor needs to prove that there was an act, there was a means, and there was a purpose or intent. Regarding the Tate and how this matters to their case, they recruited women using Instagram app, various dating apps. They recruited the women. That was the act. They also transported the women from their home countries back to Romania. And one of the things that these people love to do is get these women away from their safety nets, get them away from people who can help them. They bring the women in and they make these women dependent on them. So they recruited them and they transported them. They would transfer them and they would even harbor them. Okay, so they have multiple acts. Now the means would be deception. And you can see that a little bit further down. They deceive the women by building false relationships with the women. These women thought that they were going to Romania. Uh, most of the women, not all, most of the women thought that they were going to Romania for the purpose of being a girlfriend or the wife of one of the brothers. They had no idea that they were gonna work in pornography or webcam, they had no idea. So they were deceived into that, okay? So that's the means. So you have an act, you have multiple acts, you have a means, then you have a purpose or intent of sexual exploitation. And in this particular case, it is for commercial sex work, which is for OnlyFans or for webcam in or making any sorts of pornography whatsoever. So you have an act, you have a means, and you have a purpose or intent, and that is the international standard for human trafficking. So when you're looking at the CCTV footage and you see the girls walking around and they say, we haven't restricted their, mu uh, their movement, they can walk around freely. Yes, they can because you haven't been charged with kidnapping. You didn't chain someone up. This has nothing to do with their restricted movement. This has to do with how you manipulated them into webcam, how you recruited them, how you manipulated them through deception, transported them for the purpose of sexual exploitation. That's what the human trafficking charge is. These girls can walk around the compound if they want, but you'll note there is CCTV footage that shows, and they're trying to use this as evidence, which is insane, that some of the girls who actually left, they actually left with uh, chaperones. So the chat logs that they have, the verified chat logs between Andrew and the victims, he specifically tells one of the victims that she's not allowed to go out unless she can go out with um, Yasmina or Georgiana or one of the other bottom bitches or enforcers. So they're free to move around the compounds, but they can't actually leave unless they're chaperoned by people that the Tates dictate as the chaperones. So there is some level of restricted movement, but that's not even why they were charged. After that happened, Decart had an open criminal file against us and decided to thoroughly investigate. I cannot explain why it took so long. Uh, we can briefly tell you why this took so long. So they were raided uh, in April. The U.S. Embassy kicked this whole thing off and they rescued two girls who had locked themselves in a room. The reason this took so long, because it was at that moment, the Romanian police realized that something more uh, nefarious was happening and they launched into an investigation to see what else was going on. They monitored them. They started watching girls going in and out of the house, right? And keep in mind, they were still active in OnlyFans in 2022. The, the girl houses where the girls were working, the Tate compound, people were coming in and out. They started watching their movements, watching the girls come in and out, and they started trying to put together uh, some sort of an idea of what could be happening there. And through that time from April to December, um, through various wiretaps, um, through watching them, tracking them, they figured out that they were involved in some sort of a, a human trafficking ring. And then they arrested them in December uh, with the accusations of human trafficking. Uh, and they ended up finding a victim for, for rape and for organized crime. So in terms of why this took so long, you have four defendants, you have at least seven victims. There's seven victims in this particular case for the second new investigation. We don't know how many victims are involved there. It could be one, it could be a hundred. We have no idea. Um, so they were 
slowly investigating this. They've got one shot. Romania has to walk up to the bat or walk up to the plate. They get to swing the bat once. And if they don't hit, it's game over. So it is a very slow process. Four defendants, at least seven victims, multiple witnesses, and it's an international crime scene. So this is going to be a very, very slow-moving process. DICOT, which is the uh, Romania's version of the FBI, they're understaffed, they're not very big, and they're underfunded, plus they're tackling all the other things that are happening in Romania at the same time. So even though this gentleman and his brother are celebrities, they're not getting special treatment. They don't get to cut in front of the line. So it's a criminal investigation. It takes a while. I cannot explain why the case file remained dormant for such a long time. For some reason, around the time of my cancellation, which is certainly a coincidence, they decided to pick up this idea and find proof that I do use the lover boy method to convince girls to do sexual work. They contacted every single girl who knows me. All girls denied this and defended me. Except for the ones in the case who were accusing him. All right, keep going. So they then found two girls in which I was telling them how to make themselves famous on TikTok. Regarding TikTok, we also know that this is uh, this case is primarily about OnlyFans. And there's one particular victim that's specifically about webcam. Uh, all the other victims, uh, except for the rape victim, uh, they specifically mention OnlyFans. So the fact that he keeps mentioning TikTok is uh, he's just trying to confuse people. And it's working. If you go online, people are talking about, I can't believe he's been charged with TikTok. This is ridiculous. No, TikTok was used as a gateway drug as a way to help uh, boil the frogs, so to speak, to get women more comfortable so they could work on OnlyFans. What hours to work, how many videos to make, etc. They told these two girls they are victims and they're being exploited for money. The girls themselves said, we are not victims. This is insane. Andrew, we've never given Andrew any money. I've never seen any of them being aggressive. Pause. Okay, so these two women here, these are the two women uh, everyone loves to talk about. These two women said that they are not victims. How can they still be victims? Well, we're going to talk about that. Number one, in a human trafficking investigation, if a prosecutor has found or the police have found any evidence whatsoever that a woman could be a victim, she remains a victim until proven otherwise because women get blackmailed, women get threatened with violence. There's all sorts of things that these human traffickers and pimps can hold over the victims to make them make false statements as you're about to learn. While Andrew was in jail, his jail calls that were not made to the lawyers were recorded, which is normal procedure for any jail. During those jail calls, it was found out that these two women who are claiming not to be victims were in fact transported when they were arrested. They were transported from Romania to Dubai, and they were instructed to make videos that presented the defendants in a favorable light. Specifically, they told them to make videos to say that they were not victims. These conversations were actually dated. They're time stamped. What you're seeing here is a snippet out of the March document, the March 2023 document from Romania. These are prosecutor notes that have been translated. Um, they have the actual dates and the time stamps of these documents. The, trans the full transcripts of these will end up going to trial to prove that Andrew did instruct them um, to say that they made the videos. So we have a heavily redacted version of this document, but Rolling Stone magazine, as well as a couple of other media outlets, because they're journalists, they can get unredacted versions of the same documents. So Rolling Stone has a, a couple of, uh, they ran a whole story on this, and they have a couple of points in here regarding the recorded jail calls. And I'm going to read some of those. On January 28th, he called his assistants who patched him into a call with another associate. Uh, Tate needed supporters, women backing him up too. He needed girlfriends and female employees to talk about what a great guy he was and how he and his brother, who was also being held, were innocent. Okay, so they ha these are recorded jail calls. So we've watched the other two girls who said, oh, they're such great guys, they would never do this. They've got recorded jail calls, not only on these particular two women, but on all the women who made these videos. They were told to go out and find people to make these videos. This is all documented. It goes on. The clips of the uh, the clips that the two Tate employees made. Okay, so the the girls made the the video saying they're not victims. So then the second conversation, these vi these videos have already started going uh, viral, and people are saying, "I can't believe that they're still victims." So now they're trying to make it better. It goes on additional recorded conversations say the clips that two of the Tate employees made have views 
Uh, they are good and they're hitting hard, he told the associate. According to the transcript of the wiretap phone calls from jail from February 21st court document obtained by Rolling Stone, the transcript has been translated from English to Romanian back to English. He says, keep going, good job over and over again. Different ones, we need the girls to cry, to be frustrated, and to be angry. So they're looking for more girls to make videos as well as getting the existing girls to make different videos where they cry, they seem frustrated, and they seem angry. This is all documented, and they're all going to trial on this, okay? Again, he, he pushes. There was an urgency. Time is running out. He said, you need to hurry up, Tate said on the call, according to the translation. If we slow down, we will end up waiting without making enough explosion so we can get the fuck away from here, right? So these are part of the plans that Tate's trying to come up with while he's in prison, hoping that these video statements are somehow going to release him. Then it goes on and says, uh, but wiretap conversations from jail appear to show Tate passing instructions to women in his circle, some of whom are classified as victims by the Romanian prosecution to speak out on his behalf. All of these women making these videos were found and instructed to make these videos and they have it all documented on Tate's recorded jail calls. Now, I don't know how his attorneys did not give him a heads up that his jail calls were being recorded, but they've got this. It's documented. I've seen the documents. I've seen parts of the transcripts because they're heavily redacted. Rolling Stone and some of the other media outlets have the unredacted versions. Now, there is part of uh, a conversation that is a quote from the judge in one of the actual documents that came out of Romania. This is scathing. This is from a judge. This is not from police. This is not from the prosecutor. This is a judge that made a comment based on the evidence that they actually saw. And this is regarding, uh, this is allegedly regarding the two girls who said they're not victims. The judge says, according to the criminal investigation documents, some of the victims made uh, constant efforts to manage to escape from this state of veritable modern slavery. Many times, however, the emotional feelings toward the aggressor remained as aspect uh, that from the defense constantly tries to capitalize on. So they were his girlfriends. These two victims who said they were not victims, they were his girlfriends. They had tattoos that said owned by Tate. So they're, they're definitely victims on this. And that's why the judge wasn't falling for it. The prosecutor's not falling for it. They have the documentation. Uh, they have the chat logs. They have recorded jail calls. They have all of it. Uh, in the case of this category of victims, the period of mental recovery is long and without the help of specialists, this is almost impossible. So there was a psychological evaluation made and they had declared these two women brainwashed based on the evidence that they found. The branding comes up over and over again, doesn't it? The more you look into it. Yeah, the branding actually comes up in the 86 page document that was obtained from Romania. Let me read part of that. It says the criminal activities of these defendants are a form of slavery according to the prosecutor's office, like 19th century U.S. slave owners who branded their slaves with a red iron. Andrew Tate and Tristan Tate defendants brand their victims with tattoos, indicating that they are the defendant's property. For example, they have tattoos with a message owned by Tate in English. And keep in mind, Romania has a lot of problems with human trafficking. So this isn't their first rodeo in terms of how they're going to handle this case. They are more than equipped to properly identify victims and people who are actually involved in human trafficking. Or rude. They've always no. respected uh, respected people. I forced amenințată. No. No. N-am fost niciodată. Dacă eram amenințată, automat mai eram idiotă să stau în casa asta. Suntem prieteni buni de 2 ani de zile, cam așa. Nu poți să mă treci pe mine ca și victimă, dacă eu n-am spus că sunt o victimă. Pause. So again, those are the two women who said that they are not victims because they were instructed to say that they were not victims. They are tattooed with uh, Andrew's name that says, not just his name, they specifically say owned by Tate. They were branded as his property. They were transported from Romania to Dubai uh, at the arrest by Tate's network. The girls denied this. They used this to throw us in jail. They then activated the media machine in an attempt to find what they wanted, which were girls who we've exploited. They put us all over the news in every single country in the world. They put us on billboards. They put us all over the internet. They set up hotlines. They put all of us over the BBC, all over the MSN, saying, if Andrew's ever hurt, you call this number. Because they didn't have a case, and they're waiting for someone to come forward and give them what they wanted. Nobody came forward. There is nobody. I've done nothing wrong. At the absolute limit of the time they could wait for their golden goose to come forward, six months, to call me under detainment, 
Paul. So it's important to note when they were held under preventative detention measure, the prosecutor had 180 days to hold them while they continued their, their investigation, to legally hold them. And they were able to hold them because they actually had evidence that crimes had been committed. They were just doing deeper investigations. It wasn't that they didn't have evidence. They had evidence to arrest them. They had probable cause to arrest them. They were looking for additional evidence to support the evidence that they already found. And they actually uncovered uh, additional crimes that got moved over to a second investigation that has been started. And one of them is uh, the accusation of uh, the possibility of being involved in trafficking minors. So in terms of being held the 180 days, that was within their legal limit to do that. And if they didn't indict them by the end of the 180, uh, 180 days, they had to actually release them. But they were within the legal rights to hold them the full 180 days. That is not a human rights violation. It is perfectly legal. Okay, so what they've actually been charged with, and Andrew has been lying to everyone about this. He's lied to Tucker Carlson, and you've probably seen uh, your viral videos uh, moving around. So Andrew Tate, and this is directly from the translated indictment itself, he's been charged with one count of forming an organized criminal group, and that started in 2021, like he said. He's also been charged with human trafficking and continued form, and there are four uh, four victims that they have consolidated into that charge. He's also been charged with rape in continued form. Uh, there's two material acts there. And continued form means that it just happened more than once over a period of time. So he has been charged with a sex crime. He has been charged with human trafficking, regardless of what he's saying that he hasn't. At this point, everything Andrew says is just trust me, bro. You have all of the documentation. Anyone has access to this documentation. They just have to contact Romania and Bucharest court and they get her asked for this stuff. Anyone can find this out for themselves while Andrew's relying on trust me, bro. And again, uh, you can very... see you can see in this document you got uh 2016. 2018 for the human trafficking. Yeah, it's very clear there. Yeah, thanks for pointing that out. For the human trafficking, they specifically mention 2016, 2018 through the period of 2022. They have the dates. They have the date. So him talking about 2021, nothing counts beyond that, is verifiably false. This starts in 2016. As he says, nothing that, you know, they're playing the videos and nothing really counts for that. Okay, so what you're looking at here. Uh, this is out of the large 86-page document that you've seen. It was also obtained legally through Romania's Freedom of Information Act. This is on page 61, and they specifically are quoting Andrew out of multiple videos. Okay, they have Andrew's quotes out of multiple videos that they believe is very relevant to the case. So when you hear Andrew talking about these don't count, they absolutely count. When you hear Andrew saying that they're not in the case file, they are verifiably in the case file. When you hear people saying that they can't use videos in court, that is that is embarrassingly incorrect. These are in the case file. This stuff is going to trial. They are using Andrew's own words against him and it's all documented and everybody can get access to this information too. So when Andrew's saying that all these things don't matter, they absolutely matter. He's downplaying 100% of this. And they currently have the following case against me. Two girls who said they were kidnapped on CCTV walking in and out of the house on their own free will who were in Romania for a few days and then went to party south in France. Yeah, yeah. It, it's not about kidnapping. It's about human trafficking. Again, human trafficking, not kidnapping. And two girls who made TikTok videos who said they're not victims of anything. We've never given Andrew any money. Pause. Uh, it's not about TikTok. TikTok plays a very tiny part of this. This is about OnlyFans. It's about webcam. It's about TikTok, but how they use TikTok uh, in a particular way. They also use TikTok as a way to find customers. So in addition to breaking girls down using TikTok, they would use TikTok live streams as a way to actually find customers to then move them through uh, onto OnlyFans where they can actually monetize uh, that customer. And again, the two girls who say they were not victims, it's verifiably false. He was caught instructing them to make those videos. We've already gone over that. And they're trying to say that I made those girls do TikTok for massive financial gain, which is why I should lose all of my assets and all of my wealth in the world. That is the criminal case against me. It has nothing to do with the old webcam business I had. It has nothing to do with videos I made before. Pause. Pause. Yeah, we've already just proved that that is verifiably false for all the things we've already showed uh, on the screen. This specifically involves webcamming, it involves OnlyFans, it involves videos that he made before, his own statements. All of this is going to be held against him. It's all involved in the case. It's all in the case file. There's nothing to do with any of it. Now, as an ultimately accountable individual, do I understand why those videos may make authorities believe that if they hit me with the largest level of matrix attack, they're going to find what they want? Pause. 
Yeah, I, I have to say that Andrew keeps pushing this matrix narrative and his own attorney, one of his main attorneys in Romania, and I'm paraphrasing here, he said something along the lines of, I don't have time for the matrix narrative. I have a, a real job. And it's also important to note that in context of what's happening to Andrew Tate, the matrix is nothing more than the consequences of his actions. He violated various terms in uh, the social media platforms that got him kicked off of the platforms. He's being charged with human trafficking, being charged with rape, and he will not shut up about this case. Your video that went viral, it wasn't a matrix attack. It was because he was actually lying about the charges, right? Everything is just consequences of his actions and it's compounding. He's calling it the matrix. I'm pretty honest and pretty reasonable <laughs> for me to sit here and go, well, I understand why they thought they put me in jail in the middle of the news, they might find something. But they didn't because it doesn't exist. I don't hurt anybody. Pause. I don't hurt anybody. Now, I'm not saying Andrew hurt anybody, but I'm just showing you what the allegations are. And the prosecutor is actually going to trial on what he claims in the indictment. The prosecutor has evidence. People are saying, oh, the indictment doesn't mean anything. Anyone can write it. No, no, no. The indictment is the state accepting uh, the charges and the prosecutor is going to trial to defend the statements that he made in the indictment. So the prosecutor has evidence of everything that he's claiming happened in this indictment. Okay, so one of the victim summaries, they specifically mention uh, that him and his quote unquote uh, bottom bitch subjected the victim to physical violence. And I don't know what level of physical violence this is. That could be a slap. Uh, it could be a punch. I, I have no idea. It could be uh, a hit from the bottom bitch. It could be a hit from Andrew. It, it, they're not clear on this. So uh, here's another uh, image regarding his rape charge. And since there's two incidents of rape here on 1.3.2, you can see by exerting physical violence, this is actually described in more detail in one of the other documents that was obtained where he punched the victim in the head and then raped her. So this one is in regard into his rape charge. So they mention physical violence. And here is another victim summary that's in the indictment where they also mention by exercising physical violence. So we have three incidents where it was specifically mentioned physical violence uh, that are tied into Andrew's charges. I don't know the details of those other than what they said for the rape, where he allegedly punched her in the head, uh, either before raping her or during raping her. I, I'm not sure. A lot of these documents are, they, they come in, you know, like the chats come in English, they get translated to Romanian, uh, and then they get translated back to English, and sometimes there's some formatting issues. Regarding Tristan, it's alleged that he instructed both Georgiana and Luana to cause physical harm to a victim who wanted to quit. Luana did not do that. She ignored his request. Georgiana actually um, abu physically abused the, the victim. So she has additional charges for, for violence. Uh, for abuse and and Tristan has an additional charge for instigating the violence it came under his instruction to do so and again Tristan is pushing the same narrative that this all revolves around TikTok and for his uh, indictment it's exactly the same it's only fans um it's you know TikTok is a very small part of this so there's only fans that's primarily mentioned uh there's incitement to violence um so this whole narrative that this is about TikTok is just verifiably and embarrassingly false I can't believe their legal team is allowing them to push this false narrative. Can you also just uh, briefly talk about, because I think it's important while we're talking about the bottom bitches, uh, the kind of uh, ab abuse and psychological abuse. Um, there was there was one of the women uh, uh, tried to escape out of the house, right? Um, half naked. Yeah. So what happened specifically was she was thrown out of the house and this is, tied into the, the the act of violence here she was stripped down half naked she was thrown out of her, out of their house with no belongings uh that woman then went to the police station asking for help and this shows you because there's a lot of low-level corruption that's happening in romania and the local police uh because um luana used to be a police officer so there's a lot of low-level corruption going on, and this is how they got away with this for so long. So how did they get away with this for so long? Because local police were covering for them, and there's actually a lot of arrests happening now in Romania with some of these low-level um, police um, due to their um, covering up evidence and, and human trafficking. So this victim gets thrown out of the house half-naked. She runs to the police, and instead of helping the victim, the police actually called Luana to come back and get her. So that's like right out of a horror movie, right? It's like you're trying to get away from your captor. You run to the police and they call your captor to come and get you. And then they bring her back. 
That is, that's horrific. And then while she was gone, was it uh, Georgiana that accessed the computer? Yes. While she was gone, Georgiana illegally accessed her laptop, illegally accessed her private Facebook account and private WhatsApp account. And she distributed uh, pornographic images of this victim to her friends and family through these platforms. And it's alleged that she did so in front of other girls with the threat of this can also happen to you. So because of that, Georgiana picked up two additional charges for accessing a computer uh, illegally and for something about uh, distribution. I don't remember what the exact uh, charge is. And everybody in my past loves me and likes me because I'm a very nice man. We can tell. So that explains that. Anybody who pulls up any video from before 2021, it's not related to the case because the case is in 2021. Pause. We're going to go back to this again. You know, we, we have to keep showing this. 2021 is only for the charge of forming an organized criminal group. The human trafficking element begins in 2016. Andrew's own videos have been transcribed. They're in the case file. And all of this begins in 2016. So this, again, is verifiably false. Moving on. Me and my brother formed an organized criminal group with the intention of making girls do TikTok for our own financial gain. Pause. So the charge of organized crime is very specific. It's not because they're trying to steal TikTok money. Now, this is from the indictment themselves. It says the actions of the defendant, Andrew Tate, consisting of the following. At the beginning of 2021 on the territory of Romania, together with the defendant, Tristan Tate, and the defendants, Luana Radu and Georgiana Nagal, they formed an organized criminal group with the purpose of committing on the territory of Romania and other states, such as the USA and UK, primarily the crime of human trafficking. That's the primary reason uh, for forming the organized criminal group. Through the actions of recruiting victims carried out by the defendants, Andrew Tate and Tristan Tate, and subsequently under the coordination through the actions of sheltering and transporting the victims carried out by involving the defendants, Luana Radu and Georgiana Nagal, with the aim of obtaining significant amounts of money, forcing the victims to engage in pornographic activities for the production and distribution of pornographic materials using the website OnlyFans.com. For this purpose and suggesting them to force labor using the website TikTok.com. So TikTok is just, you notice it's at the end. TikTok was used as a gateway. It was used to break girls in. We already went over this early on. So the actual organized crime charge itself is primarily due to human trafficking for the purpose of forcing the women to engage in pornographic activities. And specifically, Andrew and Tristan were, they, their part of this was that they recruited the women. They recruited the women, they deceived the women, uh, and all of them helped transport the women back to Romania. And that's when uh, their enforcers and the bottom bitches would then take over and they would start getting hit from all sides. The bottom bitches and enforcers would start manipulating them and start pushing them onto TikTok while at the same time, the brothers would be chatting with them and talking about various things, trying to get them to take uh, pornographic photos while the girls were... Their girls are trying to uh, get pushed into working on TikTok while uh, there's one particular victim chat where Andrew is trying to push the girl to take a pornographic video with one of the girls where he wants her to put her, uh, excuse my language, he wants her to put her pussy in the other girl's face. The girl does not want to do that. And he keeps pushing her with the whole, you know, if you love me, you're going to do this for me. All, all sorts of, you know, manipulation that, that, that he does to get her to actually do this thing. And while they're getting hit with two fronts on this through the enforcers and through Andrew and the guys, they're breaking the girl's boundaries down step by step because once you get her to actually make a pornographic video or take a pornographic photo, well, then why don't you make money on it on OnlyFans? You've already done the act. You might as well make money now. So it was a documented system that they had to break these women down to eventually get them into uh, some form of pornography or OnlyFans or webcam. So that is what organized crime is about. The girls did not have access to uh, with OnlyFans. They did not have access to their admin. They did not know how much money they were making. They were paid in cash when it came to OnlyFans. Um, Georgiana would collect the money and pay them in actual cash. The girls are alleging that they think they were being ripped off. Um, Andrew has made videos, and even in his course, he said that even if you promise a girl 50%, you lie to the girl, you can make up fake tax documents, and you can say you have to take an, an additional 20% out for taxes, which you don't actually pay. Um, so you can actually increase your profitability by stealing an additional 20% from the girls who even agreed to 50%. So there, there are levels of exploit, uh, exploitation on this. And if they tried to quit, obviously they, they were punished. The only two victims are the two girls who say they are not victims. The two girls who were kidnapped 
were supposed to be victims, but escaped the kidnapping. Pause. Again, they were not kidnapped. Nobody's charged with kidnapping. Nobody's been accused of kidnapping. There's no finances in the file. Nobody can find a single proof of any money that was made. Pause. As I mentioned earlier, when they were indicted, DICOT announced that there's a second investigation, an interim investigation that's just getting started. Um, they are looking into their possibility of, th they're looking into their possible involvement of trafficking of minors, additional human trafficking, money laundering, and other possible charges that are currently unnamed. So when they're talking about finances, uh, they're looking at money laundering. That's for the second investigation. At the end of that 180 day period, they were still investigating these crimes. So they had to disjoin them to create a second investigation. So we might get a second indictment for additional charges, trafficking minors, additional human trafficking and money laundering. So Andrew's saying that finances are not part of this case, right? They've been moved to a second case and, and they're going to, they're going to have to answer to that eventually. That's the current criminal investigation. And we are now waiting for a remaining judge to analyze the file and decide whether we are guilty of this crime or not. Oh, it's really quick. Uh, right now they're in what's called the preliminary chamber. Uh, they're not waiting for a judge right now to analyze the files to see if they're guilty or not. The preliminary chamber, uh, the judge is actually making sure that all of the evidence was acquired legally. And they're making sure that all of the evidence is being disclosed or being disclosed to the actual defense team themselves. And if anything was uh, obtained illegally or the judge is like, no, this doesn't pass the sniff test, uh, that's going to be actually removed from the evidence. So that can take up to 60 days. It's called the preliminary chamber. I trust in them to do exactly that and to be fair. And then after that, there's going to be another conversation as to whether women can go around and accuse seven, eight, nine, ten people of, of kidnapping on repeat whenever they don't get the handbag they want. And is there going to be any consequences to that? And we'll see. Pause. So the girl that he's going to claim has been kidnapped who didn't actually accuse him of kidnapping her. They filed a lawsuit on this particular girl. She's being sued in the United States right now because she is a United States citizen. And the girl who she helped, um, who was she, she was trying to help get out of that situation, she's not an American citizen. She does not live in the United States, but they added her name uh, to the actual uh lawsuit itself uh, my guess is they were attempting to dox her to get her name out there so their fans can intimidate uh the victims as they did the first time the victim's name was released it's important to note because he's saying that this particular victim has accused seven men of kidnapping her or human trafficking her that is verifiably false we do have the documentation we have the florida lawsuit there is no mention whatsoever of her involvement in accusing seven men of kidnapping her or accusing seven men of human trafficking her. Now, she's no angel. She said a lot of dumb things. Um, it's important to note that, that the majority of things that she has been accused of happened when she was under the age of 18. Uh, one of the men in that lawsuit that they're saying that was innocent, he is a convicted, he was convicted, he was uh, 57, 58 years old. He was convicted of having sex with this victim multiple times when she was 15 years old. So in that Florida lawsuit, they're alleging that this man was innocent and the victim somehow made false allegations against this man and landed him in prison. Okay, so he was convicted of having sex with her multiple times. He is also convicted of having sex with another minor. And they actually have documentation through a private investigator of this man sexually abusing her through a window. I don't know if it was photos or videos, but the mother hired a private investigator and they actually caught him through documentation of him sexually abusing this girl. So the allegation that, that this man is innocent is verifiably false. So this all began with a girl accusing us of kidnapping her, a girl we have the CCTV to prove was never kidnapped. Okay, pause again. She wasn't kidnapped. The CCTV proves nothing because there's no kidnapping. It's human trafficking about how he actually, or how that girl actually got manipulated to go to Romania in the first place. The intent was, uh, was to deceive her into commercial sex work. Isn't it interesting that she's accused seven other men of kidnapping her in her life? Verifiably false, accusing those seven men of kidnapping. You can access the Florida document yourself. I'm not going to put more documents up on screen just for the privacy of the victims. And a lot of that stuff is just nonsense. Uh, I don't know, 60 or 70% on that, of that case is built entirely on hearsay. That comes on the back of another case. Uh, Tate's lawyer is representing another guy who's also trying to um, uh, sue this victim. There's a lot of shenanigans happening in Florida right now. The damage to my reputation, to my company, to my life, I've spent time in jail, is basically incalculable because I'm an extremely high net worth individual. 
Billions, perhaps. Okay, so Andrew Tate claims that maybe he's worth billions. Now, this particular clip, and we're putting this out here for fun just because Andrew's lied through 99.9% of this entire video. This is a clip of Andrew. It was either the end of 2020 or the end of 2021. Uh, just play the clip, and Andrew can tell you how much money he actually has. Welcome to the real world. I make $10 million a year, and guess how much I spend up, up to $10 million? Fucking all of it. It's all gone. I blast it into fun. $10 million. I spend all of it. Fuck you, Luke. Fuck you. It's all coming to an end. You, me, Tristan, all of it. It's coming to an end. We're all either dying or going to jail this year on Tate Company. So we don't know how much money Andrew Tate makes. We don't know if he was being serious in that video. We just toss this in there for fun. But I met the person who lost the most. If you want to talk about her as a predator who's accused seven men of kidnapping her every time they won't buy her a handbag. False. Verifiably false. One of those men killed himself. It's a public record. Look it up. The pressure was so large, he killed himself. Okay, this is true. One of her exes did kill himself, but there is currently no evidence that she is to blame for that suicide. Uh, this gentleman apparently had uh, a history of depression. And the Tates are alleging, and I believe the brother of that gentleman is alleging that the victim had something to do with that suicide. So I've seen nothing to actually prove that she was responsible for the suicide, but this young gentleman unfortunately did kill himself. We don't know why. Not everybody is like my brother and I, where they can throw us in a Romanian dungeon with the cockroaches knowing we're completely innocent and will remain iron-minded. Pause. Okay, this Romanian dungeon that he's talking about was actually a newly remodeled facility. Well, it was an old, old facility. They remodeled it. It was newly remodeled. Uh, they had new beds. They had LCD TVs on the wall. They had smart lighting. So it was not a Romanian dungeon at all. Now, if he's convicted and sentenced to prison, that is going to be a Romanian dungeon. That's going to be hell on earth. But the facility that he was in during the pretrial detention, that was a newly remodeled facility. So he painted this whole picture of it being um, hell on earth. And that just simply is not true. You can look that up yourself. Not everybody can deal with that kind of pressure when they know they've done nothing wrong. A man killed himself. And she continues to accuse people of kidnapping or rape when she doesn't get what she wants. That'd be a far more interesting story to look into. Pause. Pause. We, uh, we did look into this. We did look into this. And that's why we've made this uh, video. And we have looked into the Florida story. And he actually... He should hope that the mainstream media and independent journalists do not look into this because the case is actually quite ridiculous. And it's important to point out that what they're doing right now is victim intimidation. They are suing her because she made claims that she was, was a victim, that she was involved in a potential human trafficking network. So they're suing her to try to completely discredit her as well as to frighten any other possible woman who might be trying to come forward to say that she is also a victim. So this is victim intimidation on multiple levels. If the MSM and these right wingers actually cared about the truth. God has put us on this path. God has put us on this path. That is the most ridiculous and audacious thing that he can say. He's being charged with human trafficking, being charged with rape. And in the United Kingdom, there's another civil case that's getting started. There are four women in the UK who are accusing him of sexual assault. There's a new investigation that involves uh, their possible involvement in trafficking minors. Uh, God has nothing to do with this, Andrew. To try and awaken the world to perhaps the predatory crime this girl likes to indulge in. And in the end, justice shall be served. So all in all, we're very positive. I believe in truth. I believe in justice. And I believe in the Romanian judicial system. And I believe in the end, truth will prevail and justice will be served. Anybody who puts together any edit of any video that is older than 2021 doesn't understand has nothing at all to do with the criminal case. Yeah, we've already proven that that's verifiably false. This case starts in 2016 for human trafficking. And anybody now on the right who's attacking me in perfect sync overnight with all these other accounts is simply a matrix agent which has been activated by the people in charge who understand that their primary weapon, the MSN, is no longer working. It's bouncing off of me because people love truth and they love honesty. Well, I like to say they were activated by my viral video. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, don't, I don't think it was the matrix yeah this is pretty crazy again it's a matrix attack no you made a viral video because he went on Tucker claiming all of these things were not true so you made a video it went viral people who follow each other shared that video and now it's a matrix attack it's, it's ridiculous <laughs> I hope this has given you all some clarification 
I understand there are accounts on the internet who keep pulling up these files they found and these conversations they found and all these garbage papers, etc. That's he's, he's talking about. He's talking about you. <laughs> yeah, he's talking. Yeah, so the viral video is you, and then these documents are me and some of the other people who have been trying to uh, let people know that there's another side to this story. So again, all of these files were obtained legally through Romania's Freedom of Information Act. You can look at the image on the screen right now. The image on the left is the actual, and we're just focused on the indictment here. Um, this indictment was emailed to us directly from uh, the Bucharest court. We requested this document. This is the indictment document, and you can see the email for the public re the relations department. You can verify that email for yourself. You can contact them yourself. You can get the same documentation that we have to prove that the Tate brothers are 100% lying to you about their entire case, their involvement in pornography. When they quit making pornography, it is all a verifiable lie. And if you want to put in the work to actually get this documentation, you can get it yourself. All the documents that we're getting are obtained in the same way. He's the one who's really pushing this thing of don't believe any documentation. Don't believe anything, anything else but what I say. That's the only thing that you can believe. Um, whereas for you and I, we're saying, guys, do the work. Here's the receipts, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And uh, yeah, let me say this. I'm not saying I mean, I have my own opinions of what's going to happen. But by exposing these lies and documents, I'm not telling you that Andrew Tate is guilty. All I'm saying is he's lying to you. I personally believe that he will be found guilty of human trafficking, but I'm not telling you that he's guilty. I'm saying look at the actual documentation coming out of Romania so you can see that he's lying to you and Tristan is lying to you about everything. And then once you realize that they're lying about things that they don't even have to lie about, then you have to ask the question, what else are they lying about? And you have to start unpeeling those layers of lies to figure out what's actually going on. Now, here's the thing. Uh, yes, uh, any victim can come forward and claim anything that happened to them. In this particular case, there are seven victims. There are multiple witnesses. There are verified chat transcripts from the brothers to the victims themselves. There are Andrew's video statements. There are Andrew's courses that he sold. Everything corroborates the actual victim statements themselves. So the odds of this not happening, uh, highly unlikely. Um, they were indicted. This is going to trial. Um, could they be found, you know, could they beat this case? Sure, it's court. Anything can happen. But, and I don't comment on the rape because, you know, there's not a lot of information out on that. But for human trafficking, yeah, they're going to get it for that. And, and, and probably for... Um, organized crime as well. But I'm not, I'm not telling you that. I'm just saying that's my own personal belief based on the documentation that I've seen. I just urge you to do your own work. Don't, don't fall for trust me, bro. Right. Look at the documents, get them yourself. If you don't believe us um, and just, you know, just entertain the idea that, wow, if he's lying about something so silly as charges that anyone can find the truth about what else can they be lying about? I actually don't want to talk about this case because I'm not allowed. It's very hard for me to talk about it. But when all of this concludes in due time, I'd be very interested in having your attention to sit and do a long format video to explain to you exactly how this matrix attack happened from head to toe, explaining every single detail of it, and you'll just understand exactly how innocent I am. If I was truly guilty of doing these things, I would still be in jail. Pause. Pause. Like, why stop? Right, you had to get one more line, <laughs> though, right? So here's another misconception. If he was truly guilty, he would still be in jail. And a lot of people love this argument. How can he be in jail for crimes that, where he hasn't even been to trial for yet? Okay. He was put in jail when they arrested him in December as a preventative measure because they believed through their investigations and through wiretaps that he was going to, number one, flee the country. Number two, that he had the possibility to actually intimidate victims and witnesses. And number three, they were worried that he was going to tamper with evidence and possibly destroy evidence. So they were in jail for roughly three months. And during that time, they searched every one of his properties they searched every device that he has, all the computers. And if you remember when he was coming and going, him and Tristan would be, uh, they would be brought in a van and they would be taken into a garage door. A lot of those walks into DICOT, those were for the actual device searches themselves. So the brothers had to come there with their lawyers. They had to give DICOT permission to open the devices and they had to be there while those devices were being searched. Uh, and, and search for actual evidence. So their lawyers had to be there. The Tates had to be there. It all had to be approved. So it's all legit. And that's why you saw them coming in and out of that van going under the, the garage door so many times. A lot of that was for device uh, devices that were being searched. So they were not in jail because 
or they were not in jail for punishment of their crimes. They were in jail to stop them from interfering with the investigation. Once that stage of the investigation ended and they satisfied, they satisfied the judges and made them believe that they would not flee, their passports were confiscated, and then they were given house arrest. Uh, what's going to happen next? Eventually, it could happen next month. Uh, it could happen, uh, you know, next year. Eventually, they're going to get what's called judicial control, which is a form of bail. That means they'll be free to run around Romania, but they will not be allowed to leave Romania, and they will have to report to the authorities at some interval to let them know where they're at. Uh, we've done historical deep dives into other cases in Romania, um, human trafficking, people who have charged, been charged with the exact same things, even people charged with attempted murder, they all get judicial control. So the only reason that they might not get judicial control is that they have evidence that they are planning an escape and they could flee, or if the Tates do something where they violate the terms of their house arrest agreement. Um, they did have one judge in one of their appeals who believed that they could be put on judicial control. Uh, and that's one judge out of 25. They've seen 25 different judges since their arrest. And one judge out of 25 thought that they were ready for judicial control. The misconception is, and the narrative that the brothers pushed, is that one judge saw the evidence and determined that the evidence was weak or there was no evidence. That is verifiably false. It had nothing to do with the evidence. It was about they just believed that they no longer had to be on house arrest and they could be released to judicial control. They brought in a third judge as a tiebreaker who agreed that they needed to remain on house arrest as a preventative measure. It had nothing to do with lack of evidence or that there was no evidence or that they wanted to throw out the case. That's verifiably false as well. And I'm at home. And soon I will be free. So, I hope that's some clarification. If you are not satisfied with the answer I've given you, you're unfortunately going to have to wait to the end of the trial. But I would say, for anybody with a brain who understands what I'm saying, we all understand how dates work. I'd like to think everybody at home understands a calendar. Considering that my case is pertaining to 2021 and onward. False. Man, I thought we were going to be finished with this. Uh, does human trafficking begins in 2016. We've already proved that. Anything before 2021 has nothing to do with it. Hope you can work that one out. We did. We actually, we, we worked that out. <laughs> we literally worked that out and just debunked every single lie that you told. I also think that everybody at home with a brain who understands that when 15 to 20 right-wingers are activated overnight with the same message, instantly told to attack somebody who just managed to achieve the largest interview in television history. Pause. So he's talking about the interview for the largest uh, interview in history. And he showed in the beginning of this video uh, a graphic of Andrew Tate on the Wikipedia page being the largest TV interview in history. Well, somebody, obviously a fan, went to Wikipedia and actually put that in, but Wikipedia quickly removed that. Uh, Michael Jackson still remains number one. Andrew Tate was removed. Uh, and look at the top there. This is the list of most watched television interviews. And Andrew Tate is obviously not aware that his Tucker or the interview with Tucker Carlson was not on television. It was on the Internet. So he was removed from this list. Uh, a gr good interview. He lied during most of it, but uh, he was removed from the list. So even the last thing he says is verifiably false. That tells you a lot more about who they are than who I am. Okay, on that note, I want to close by saying this. I personally do not like what those guys stand for in regards to the misogyny and their involvement in the sex industry, etc. But I also want to say that I do believe or I, I hope they get a fair trial. Up to this point, there's been no indication that there's been any corruption whatsoever. If there were some level of corruption happening, their own lawyers would step up and say so. Uh, their lawyers have not indicated or made any statements whatsoever about any corruption happening at any level. So I hope the brothers uh, and their two accomplices have a fair trial, and I hope the victims receive the justice that they deserve. I won't lie to you, Neil. It's all coming to an end. You, me, Tristan, all of it's coming to an end. We're all either dying or going to jail.